hey, apparently <laughs> we're live. Do you like when Facebook's like, we're not gonna go live, and then suddenly you are. Hey, totally unaware. I was probably making some face like, what's happening? Um, hey guys, Lynn Marie here, your quitting evangelist. Hopefully coming to you live. Very hard to tell at this point. <laughs> it says live. But I'm coming to you with this week's quit of the week. And it doesn't have a great name. Now, last time I came to you with a not a not yet named quit of the week, Kirk stepped in and had a great quit of the week name. So I am fully aware by the time I'm like halfway through this, somebody will have popped in with a great quit of the week name. But what we are going to talk about today was inspired by my soul sister, Colette Davenport. She just went live about an hour or so ago and she was talking about this instance where she was speaking live somewhere and she could tell the audience wasn't vibing with her and she ended up like having to essentially quit the talk halfway, which she was just setting boundaries. She's like, I'm not gonna put my energy into the rest of this talk. Like they're clearly not vibing. I'm gonna just go one-on-one -on -one with this. The point of the story that I'm telling you, like not different from her point, was that as she's relaying this in a Facebook Live, in like one of the first few sentences, I think she said the word need and have to or something else, and then she self-censored. And I know exactly why she's self-censored, or I think I do. Colette, you can step in and let me know. But a lot of us are so ingrained in this personal development world, in, you know, we listen to the podcasts, we are surrounded by coaches all the time, and you read these, you know, inspirational things on Instagram that tell you, you should never say should, though, did you hear what it said? It says you, I mean, it'll just be like, don't say should, but the parenthetical before that is you should never say should, right? Like it's still shooting on you in some way, shape or form, right? So I think, and I know that I am guilty of this, is I will be telling a story in my own flow and I will have to stop and self-censor because I'm talking to people that I think will censor me if I don't do it myself, right? Like, oh, you shouldn't have said should. Oh, you shouldn't have said have to. You shouldn't have said need. You should never, okay, you're making yourself out to be the victim right now. I am not saying that there is not a huge role to be played um, by language. I'm going to have Mark England on the podcast in the next week or two. His big thing is about how you use language. And I do think it's very important. But I also think that it's very important to be able to tell a story in your flow and what's feeling true to you at that moment and not have to continuously censor yourself because you're afraid that you're gonna use the wrong word and somebody else is going to get on you for it. Like, how would you write something in your journal? Now, you can look back at your journal and be like, oh, I was speaking kind of negatively about myself to myself. All right, we know that that probably isn't serving you, but if you're telling a story and you accidentally throw in a have to or a should, guess what? There's how, there aren't any absolutes in this world. But, very few. I'm absolutely not having a kid. I mean, not going to happen. But short of that, <laughs> I'm absolutely also never going to be in the NBA. Okay, there. Are, see, I can't even say that there are no absolutes. There's a great example. There's not even an absolute no to absolutes, right? But a lot of times in self-help, we're like, never say should. Or every time that you're going to say, I have to do a thing, say I get to do a thing. Well, that's fine. And that definitely tends to help your mindset with things that you may not want to do, right? Like, okay, I, you know, I have to do this thing. No, I get to because I have the opportunity to do this thing, et cetera, et cetera. Well, there are some things you have to do and, you know, like work out or eat healthy or things that are, you know, yeah, you don't have to, but you also don't have to live past 50, right? Like these are choices we make and it, it can have a different energy whether you choose have to or get to. But I think there's a third energy that comes from over censoring yourself and being afraid to ever say one of these words. It's okay, right? And I loved what Colette said right after she like censored herself. She was like, uh, I'm not really into perfectionism if you haven't gotten that yet. And I thought that was so fantastic to just put it out there because essentially what she was saying is if you just judge me as imperfect for using the wrong verbiage, don't worry. I get that and I don't care. <laughs> and and I love that. I love that she put that out there because we're not perfect. And yeah, we might try to be phrasing things in the way that's best for us as much as we can. And that is to our benefit, right? Like I'm sure Mark and I are going to talk about this is like using and choosing powerful words, empowering words uh, that bring us up and that uplift us and make us realize, okay, we get to do things instead of have to. But if you accidentally drop a have to, it is not the end of the world. You get to not judge yourself. 
in that instance. And that's just what I wanted to bring, bring to the front today, though I didn't have a great way to sum it up. I guess maybe quitting overly censoring yourself is because it's, it's just like everything else. We talk about healthy diet, right? Okay, what kind of life are you living if you never, ever, 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 ever eat that one thing that you love to eat? That's so restrictive. And at some point in time, I think you're probably gonna mentally do a little bit more harm than good. Unless, of course, you're on a certain diet for, you know, medical reasons, good, fine. But, you know, if you're just like, okay, I'm ketogenic because it makes me feel great, but one day you have a carb, it's okay, right? Same thing with health. One day you skip a workout or a few days you skip a workout. Sometimes that's even better. Well, this is in the other realm, which is more of the like mental wellness realm. Okay, so once in a while you don't use the most empowering word. I would be no harder on myself, or I'm, I'm suggesting maybe, to quit being hard on yourself in that situation any harder than you would be on a situation if you decided to have a cheat meal or you didn't go out and work out for a day. It's okay. Love, I love what Colette said. It's just like, I'm not perfect. We're not perfect at eating. We're not perfect at working out. We're not perfect at personal development. You know, like everybody wakes up and we're human. Even those of us who coach, probably especially those of us who coach, we wake up and there's, we have our own struggles. We don't wake up and instantly think like, oh, let me be grateful for the three things. You know, every single morning, sometimes you wake up and you're like, man, I didn't sleep so well. And, and today I, got, I, I have to do a thing that I don't want to do. Like we have those moments. Everybody does. And I think it's really inauthentic to just pretend like that never happens. Everybody's language is always perfection and you should never say any of the words should, right? So my thing for the week is take it easy on yourself in all the realms. It's okay. And maybe if you're on the other end of it, and the person says one of those words and it's not, they're clearly in a flow and not necessarily looking for feedback, maybe let it slide every once in a while. And that came to mind because I was watching, it's called Wine Country on Netflix. It's a Tina Fey movie and I was never gonna miss a Tina Fey movie. And, and in it, there's a therapist and before she gives any statement of anything, she always says, can I give a minute of feedback? And sometimes they get to say no. And I kind of love that. It was kind of a punchline in there, in the movie. But if somebody is like going off and they're telling a very passionate story and you want to jump in and be like, you shouldn't have said half, maybe that's where you ask, can you get a little feedback? Because like my buddy Jason Goldberg talks about, he calls it coaching without permission, where you know, you're telling a story and then somebody just jumps in, they're like, uh, you know, what, what does that say about you? What were you avoiding in that moment? And they just like go straight into like the analysis and they're like, let's dig into your childhood wound. And you know what? There's a time and place for that. But just like with everything else, consent is a good idea. <laughs> I, I was out the other night and I was trying really hard to be social and I was like working up the courage and I like went up to a person and I admitted that. I was like, I'm trying to be social. And this person says, don't try, just be. And I was like, oh, now I don't want to be social anymore. Really? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to be coached all the time. You know, like that was what I was feeling to me in the moment. I, I, yeah, there are times when, if that's my coach, tell me don't try a thing, just do a thing. But I literally, that's what I was doing at the moment. I, it would have been inauthentic for me to say anything else. I was literally working my way over to a group about to make a move. So anyway, this is a very rare Monday quit of the week because it's taking place of two quits of the weeks, last week and this week, because I'm working like crazy at the VA. And so it doesn't leave a lot of time to do these. So I'm popping in. As you can tell, my hair is not done. I am probably half a mess here. Just recorded Ali Waddell, though. That was amazing. Uh, she'll be on next week. But anyway, I wanted to come to you essentially with the one time I have in these two weeks to chit chat about a quit. Now, if you have anything you would like to title this, uh, pop it in the comments. And if you have anything you'd like to hear on future quit of the week, put that in the comments too. All right, my friends. Uh, by the way, if you want a great laugh, check out last week's episode of Quit Happens with Brian Stacy. It is hilarious. He is a fantastic storyteller. I'm laughing the whole time. It is delightful. Check it out. And for everybody else out there, until next time, my friends, happy quitting. <laughs>